what we're going to do today is to look at the practical working with the beehive and to see what sort of features we are going to look for when we do these examinations. Right, we have our smoker well lit with plenty of smoke and bear in mind whenever working with bees we want to handle them as gently as possible no banging and pushing of the hive and the first thing we do when we want to open the hive is a few gentle puffs of smoke into the entrance of the hive and that will get the bees sipping on the honey when they're full of honey they are not as likely to sting and the smoke has the calming effect on the bees while that effect is taking place I'll just tell you what we look for when we examine a hive there's several things we need to look for the first one of course is to see if there is a queen in the hive you don't necessarily have to see her but you need to have signs that there is a queen in the colony we also look for signs of uh, food that is honey and pollen and we judge the goodness or the quality of the queen by the amount of brood in the hive and the actual brood pattern in which she is laying. Gently lift off the lid, place it behind the hive. We have our hive tool. Gently lift the inner cover putting a puff of smoke underneath as you do so and we place this cover the front of the hive like that at an angle and the bees will walk up back into the hive we will have a look in the super and see what hap what's happening in here we gently prise one frame loose and very slowly and gently lift it out of the super. There you see the bees busy sipping on the honey and there's a little bit of honey stored in this comb on both sides and you will notice that quite a lot of the comb is drone comb that is a big size honeycomb which is used to breed drones the bees often build drone comb in the supers to save wax and if there's a honey flow on they will often do that Just putting this frame back in. We don't want to examine the whole super. We want to see what's going on in the brood box. So we gently lift the super. Once again, a little puff of smoke underneath. Drive the bees down and away. And the super we place on the roof at the back of the hive. The first comb we're going to remove is the one closest to me and by doing that it gives me some space to manipulate and work with the combs as we go further into the brood nest. Gently just loosen the comb, slowly lift it out of the hive, have a look at it and what do we find? It's a comb packed with pollen on this side absolutely solid with pollen and a little bit of honey at the top as well right I'm putting this comb down on its end leaning against the back of the hive taking care not to squash any bees now I'm going to remove the next frame
gently prise it apart. Now this is a lovely frame of solid brood on this side and on this side almost as solid. Plenty of sealed brood there. That is all this is sealed brood with the brown cappings. Honey is normally capped over with a whitish color capping. But that frame is almost full of brood. I'll put this comb on the edge of the hive and move it back into its original position when I close up the hive. Another comb fairly full of brood and as we get deeper into the nest or the brood nest we should come across unsealed brood, eggs and larva which obviously indicate that the queen is laying well. This is not a very good comb but I just want to show you the difference between worker brood and drone brood. This is drone brood here large cells with very high built-up caps covering the cells. This is worker brood here with small cells and very flat cappings. There is a big difference between the two. What I'm doing now, moving these combs to the center of the brood nest because I've discovered one comb which is not very good and I'm going to move it to the outside of the brood nest with a view to changing it in a future date. When we put the combs back in, we are very careful not to roll or squash bees, so I gently ease the comb into position, keeping the side bars touching close together. Now this is the frame that I'm unhappy with and so I'm putting it on the outside so that I can change it over at some future date. This allows existing brood to emerge before removal. An important point to remember once you've completed putting the frames back in the hive is to make sure that all the frames are touching each other as tightly as possible. So we move the frames over so that they are touching against each other otherwise you will make the bee space wrong and the bees will build crooked comb. That is about it. We're going to replace the super. When you're putting supers or queen excluders back on the hive we always put them back at an angle like that and gently move bees out the way as you gradually lower the super or the queen excluder. Trying to squash as few bees as possible. Any bees that are adhering to the roof like that can be shaken into the hive and this is one of the few things that we do with speed, that is shaking bees off anything, is done with a quick jolt. And to replace the inner cover, putting back the inner cover, we once again put it across at an angle, gradually pushing away any bees that may be on the edges of the super, and in this way we squash or roll or kill as few bees as possible. Any bees on the inner cover you can sweep off before putting the roof back on. And also a couple of small weights just to hold the roof on in case there's a whirlwind or a very strong wind. 
Just to recap then in examining a hive, we're looking for several things. First of all, is there a queen present? And you can tell that by the presence of brood. We look for pollen, we look for honey, and we just look for a good brood pattern. The beekeeper needs to do this once or twice a year, and it's part of the general routine management of beehives. Thank you.